My name is Sam Vaknin and I'm a columnist in Brussels Morning. Israel bombed a structure that served the Iranian consulate in Damascus. Though not strictly within the compound of the embassy, it was widely known as an outpost of Iranian diplomacy in Syria. The language of Articles 21 to 25 of the Vienna Convention of, on Diplomatic Relations, dated 1961, this language is clear. Embassies and consulates are not sovereign territory. They are not extraterritorial. They just enjoy certain legal exemptions. That's all. So why did Iran choose to escalate and retaliate by attacking Israel with a barrage of 300 unmanned aerial vehicles, also known as drones, as well as cruise missiles and ballistic missiles? because of the growing threat to its out-of-control proxies everywhere. Hamas, the Houthis, the Hezbollah, first and foremost. Iran needed to reassert its authority over these terrorist organizations by being seen to fearlessly conflict directly with the little devil, Israel. But the attack misfired in every conceivable way. More than 97% of the weapons launched were intercepted long before they had reached the borders of Israel, exposing the inefficacy of drones and even missiles as decisive factors in modern warfare, set as they are against high-tech defenses. The onslaught on Israel diverted attention, at least momentarily, from the plight of the Palestinians in Gaza and the much heralded Israeli invasion of Rafah. It is a distraction video, a distraction window, I'm sorry, of opportunity that Israel might use to push on with its offensive. The United States, France, the United Kingdom, and even Jordan sided with Israel against Iran. It is a reminder that Sunni countries are actually quite elated with the damage that Israel is inflicting on Shia, Iran, and its proxies, both Sunni and Shia. Countries like Saudi Arabia, Jordan, and Egypt regard Israel as a handy and welcome buffer against Iran's expansionist dreams and in the face of the Iran-sponsored death cults that cloak themselves in Muslim Brotherhood religious political ideology. Finally, Iran's buffoonish retribution is humiliating. It exposes the incompetence and corruption of the theocracy. Coupled with a tanking economy, it will lead to civil unrest within Iran, and perhaps to the rise of a more reformist streak of political Islam. All these positive outcomes depend on Israel's next move. Biden's sage advice to Netanyahu was to take the win and gloat over Iran's debacle. But far-right forces within Israel have been spoiling for a regional war with the arch-enemy Iran for many years now. Netanyahu himself may provoke a regional kerfuffle in order to divert attention from his legal woes and force the United States to commit to his agenda. Such a course of action, however, would amount to an unmitigated disaster for the Jewish state. Israel cannot defeat Iran, especially when it is already fighting a war on multiple other fronts. The USA will not be dragged into Israeli adventurism. It will rather abandon Israel to its fate. Should it choose to confront Iran now, Israel will have completed its transformation into the second North Korea, a pariah state.